Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Kadhadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so we're reading the introduction from Prabhupada's lecture about introduction to the Vedas. So Prabhupada began by talking about the four kinds of defects of our material mind and senses. And then he's describing different kinds of knowledge. He explained, he explained that we can get knowledge directly from the senses. Just like we, just like we use our eyes or we use our ears or we touch something, we get knowledge by using the senses. But we decided that that kind of knowledge is not perfect. Our senses are not perfect. So there's another way we can get knowledge. We said we could get knowledge by the mind. We think we think we have different ideas and different opinions about something. And we give the example about Darwin. Darwin had the theory about how life came about, what was the origin of life. He didn't have any proof, but he had the theory in his mind. Just like great rishis, the great rishi may have an idea, he has an opinion about something, but then after some time another rishi comes along and he defeats that rishi's opinion and he establishes his own opinion. But that will never give us perfect knowledge. One person after another will come, one person will defeat the other, and then another person will come and defeat him, and we will never come to any conclusion, we will never find out the truth. But the Vedic knowledge is called Shabda Praman, which means it comes from hearing. 
พระรูปนเวเนี่ยเราจะเรียกว่าสัปดาประมาณหรือว่ามันเราได้มาจากการฟัง We have to hear from the Vedas or from the scriptures. Hari Bo. Hari Krishna Guru Maharaj. I could, I could. But there was, we were cut off. There was no sound. Oh, okay, okay. I said yes. Yeah. No, I, I can. Can you? I can you? repeat that again. ความรู้ที่ได้จากประเวทเนี่ยเราจะเรียกว่าชับดาประมาณหรือว่าการได้ยินการเรียนรู้จากการได้ยินจากการฟัง So we get perfect knowledge from the Vedas. แต่มันก็เป็นความรู้ที่สมบูรณ์เพราะเป็นความรู้ที่เราได้จากประเวท We give the example about cow dung. The cow dung is pure. เราให้ตัวอย่างของเหมือนกับมูลวัวเพราะมูลวัวเนี่ยถือว่าเป็นสิ่งที่บริสุทธิ์ But the 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 dung of, the stool of the brahmana is not pure แต่ว่าอุจจาระของพราหมณ์เนี่ยเราไม่ถือว่าเป็นสิ่งที่บริสุทธิ์ But the stool of the cow is very special it's very purifying แต่ว่าอุจจาระของวัวเนี่ยเป็นสิ่งที่บริสุทธิ์และเป็นสิ่งที่ทำให้ So this knowledge comes from the Vedas. The Vedas give perfect knowledge. In the same way, the Vedas tell us there is a spiritual sky. There's not only the material sky. There's a spiritual sky. And just as there's a material world, there's a spiritual world. So there's another nature beyond the manifestation and non-manifestation. So somebody may say, "How do you know that there's a place? There's a sky." Where all the planets and the inhabitants are all eternal, they don't die. So this knowledge is in the Vedas. But if we want to make an experiment, that's not possible. You have to take the help from the Vedas. That is called Krishna conscious. That is called Vedic knowledge. Just like in our Krishna consciousness movement, we are taking knowledge from the from the highest authority, Krishna. Krishna is accepted as the highest authority by all classes of men. Krishna is the author of the Vedas. The Vedic knowledge came from Krishna. He gave the knowledge to Brahma. 
พราะว่าความรู้พระเวทนี้เนี่ยคือมาจากกิจนาก็เข้าเนี่ยทรงมอบให้กับพระพง So Lord Brahma worships Krishna. So Krishna is accepted as the highest authority by all men. Just like if we look at those people who are transcendentalists, transcendentalist means they're liberated souls. They're free from the material energy. So there are two classes of transcendentalists. One class is called the impersonalist, and the other is called the personalist or the devotees. So the impersonalists, we usually call them Maya Vadi. And they're also known sometimes we know them as Vedantists. They, they only follow the four Vedas. They don't follow the Bhagavad Gita. They don't follow Srimad Bhagavatam. They only follow the Vedas. So this is why this book, Sri Ishopanishad, is very important. Because, oh, wait, should I should share the screen, right? And then you can follow on the. Should I? Yes, Guru Maharaj, you can do that. Uh, I'm not the host today. Maybe Nima is such a Sutta Prabhu can. Oh, yes, maybe he can. Nima, can I? Can we share the screen? Uh, he is the Nepali translator, Guru Maharaj. We can't hear Oh, it's him. okay. I can He's share it. He's already done it, oh, okay. I think. Yeah, I think he did it. Okay, Brother, thank you. Okay, can you see the screen? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Very well. Okay, we're up the top of the page here. All right. One class of transcendentalist is called impersonalistic, Maya Bhadi. So they are, they are also generally known as Vedantists, led by Shankaracharya. So we said these these Mayavadi or Vedantists, they only accept the four Vedas. They don't accept Bhagavad Gita. They don't accept the Bhagavatam. So Shankaracharya, he was a great. He was the. He's the head of the Mayavadi people. He came in this world 1200 years ago. And he, he's, an he's an incarnation of Lord Shiva. The, it said Lord Vishnu gave the order to Lord Shiva that he should come in the Kali Yuga and he should teach the Mayavadi philosophy. And in this way he would lead the people away from Buddhism. 
and he would bring back the Vedas. So Shankaracharya, he drove Buddhism out of India. And he brought back the Vedas and he established the, the good Brahmins, good Brahmanas. So there's another class of transcendentalists called Vaishnavas, like Ramanuj Acharya, Madhva Acharya, Vishnu Swami. Both the Shankara both the Shankara Sampradaya and the Vaishnava Sampradaya have accepted Krishna as the supreme personality of Godhead. Shankaracharya is supposed to be an impersonalist who preached impersonalism, impersonal Brahman, but it is a fact that he is a covered personalist. Okay. Are you all right, Archana? Yes, Guru Maharaj. In his commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, this is Shankaracharya, in his commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, he wrote, Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is beyond this cosmic manifestation. And then again he confirmed that Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayan, is Krishna. He has come as the son of Devaki and Vasudev. He particularly mentioned the names of his father and mother. So Krishna is accepted as the Supreme Personality of Godhead by all transcendentalists. There is no doubt about it. So Prabhupada is giving evidence here from the writings of Shankaracharya that he also believed in Krishna. And Shankaracharya, he is the head, he is the main Acharya for the impersonalists, for all the Vedantists and the Mayavadis. There are many Mayavadis, many Mayavadis and many people who follow the Vedanta. We don't find many Vaishnavas, we don't find many devotees. 
ต่เราจะไม่ค่อยได้เห็นว่ามีสาวกหรือว่าวัยชนะวะเนี่ยเยอะ At least before Prabhupada came, it was very rare. Most people were all Mayavadis. I know most of the Bhagavad Gita's books were all Mayavadis, written by Mayavadis. So although they don't really accept the Bhagavad Gita, they would like to come and give their Mayavadi commentary on it. So Prabhupada said, Mayavadi everywhere. He said. As soon as you scratch the surface, if you take away the just like if you're uh, doing gardening, <laughs> maybe you go in the garden, and so you scratch the surface, you move the dirt off a bit, and then you go below the dirt, and then you see mayavadi. Just like you know, you, you look at the heart of someone, you look at someone's heart, and you think, oh, maybe they're a devotee, maybe they're 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 devotees. But if you take, if you move the dirt a bit, you clean the heart a bit, you'll see that they're Maya body. อืมเหมือนกับการทําความสะอาดสนามหญ้าถ้าเกิดว่าเราแบบว่าตัดหญ้าอะไรอย่างเงี้ยเราสุดท้ายถ้าเกิดเราแบบรื้อหญ้าไ
โดยไม่มีการตีความ Prabhupada called his translation of the Gita Bhagavad Gita as it is, because he was presenting the message exactly as Krishna spoke it. But other other people they write the Bhagavad Gita as they want it to be. Now they will use the Bhagavad Gita to give their own philosophy. They won't they won't present Krishna's philosophy. They want to give their own philosophy. So that is not Bhagavad Gita as it is. They don't translate the real message of Krishna. Prabhupada said, "We have published Bhagavad Gita as it is because we we accept Krishna as he is speaking without any interpretation." So that is Vedic knowledge. Since the Vedic knowledge is pure, we accept it. Whatever Krishna says, we accept. This is Krishna consciousness. That saves much time. If you accept the right authority or source of knowledge, then you save much time. We have to accept. We have to understand this. We have to be able. We have to accept the authority. Just like if you work in a, a, a in a company, you have a job, you have to work under the boss. You have to do what the boss says. And similarly, you have a teacher. You have to accept whatever the teacher says. So, Prabhupada gives some. He says, for example, there are two systems of knowledge in the material world: inductive. And deductive. So Prabhupada is going to explain to us what is the difference between these two systems of knowledge. From deductive, you accept that man is mortal. Your father says man is mortal. Your sister says man is mortal. Everyone says man is mortal. But you do not experiment. 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 But you do not
You accept it as a fact that man is mortal. If you want to research to find out whether man is mortal, you have to study each and every man. So you may come to think that there may be some man who is not dying. But you haven't seen him yet. So in this way, your research will never be finished. Because there are so many men, then you have to wait. You have to see, is there any man who doesn't die? So in Sanskrit, this process is called Aroha, the ascending process. There's two ways to get knowledge, we said. One way is to ascending and the other is descending. Just, just like if you have a rope and you climb up the rope, but it's a lot of work to climb up the rope, it's a big struggle. But to come down the rope is very quick. So, if you want to get knowledge, if you want to attain knowledge by any personal endeavor, it will take you a lot of time, a lot of trouble. You may never get the answer. One problem is that we have imperfect senses. So we may never be able to come to the right conclusion. So Prabhupada says in the there's a statement in the Brahma Samhita. It says, it says just ride on the aeroplane which runs at the speed of the mind. Mm, yeah, our airplanes, they can go at 2,000 miles an hour. But what is the speed of the mind? You may be sitting at home and you can immediately think of India maybe thousands of miles away, but at once it can be in your home. The mind has gone there. We didn't go there, but the mind went there. So the mind, the speed of the mind is very fast. So the Brahma Samhita says, 
You may travel at the speed of the mind for millions of years. But you'll still be far away from the spiritual world. So the Vedic rule is you have to approach, you have to approach the spiritual teacher. Mm. It says you must approach the spiritual teacher. You have no choice. You have to take a spiritual teacher. But you have to know what is the qualification of a spiritual teacher. Just like if you want to buy gold, you have to be able to recognize real gold. Or if you want to buy a car, you have to know what's a good car. We know it's easy to be cheated in the material world. We said there are two kinds of people. One is the cheater and the other is the cheated. So you want to get a spiritual teacher? You have to know what's the qualification. If you don't know the qualification, then you won't be able to find out who is the spiritual teacher. So spiritual teacher is one who has heard the Vedic message. And he must have heard from the right source. And he must be practicing the teachings of the Vedic knowledge. He should be established in Brahman. Means that he is not attached to the body. He's, he's not got material desires. So Prabhupada said these are two qualifications he must have. If he doesn't have these two qualifications, then he's not a real spiritual teacher. So, what are, what are the two qualifications again? One is, first of all, he must have studied the Vedas from a proper teacher. He must have taken a teacher himself and studied from him. You, can, you cannot just study the Vedas on your own. You have to study from a teacher. 
พราะว่าพระเวทเนี่ยเราไม่สามารถศึกษาเองได้เราต้องศึกษาจากพระอาจารย์ That's the first qualification that he studied from the right place. Just like you, you go for an interview, you want to get a job, they will ask you, "Where did you study?" เหมือนกับการที่เราไปสมัครงานเวลาเราไปสมัครงานเนี่ยจะเขาจะถามเราว่าคุณจบที่ไหนมา Where did you graduate from คุณคุณเรียนที่ไหนมา They want to know did you study have you got qualification ก็คือเขาอยากจะรู้ว่าคุณได้ผ่านการเรียนมาหรือเปล่าคุณมีเพื่อนสมบัติหรือเปล่า And the same way the spiritual teacher has to be qualified ในลักษณะเดียวกันพระอาจารย์ทิพย์เนี่ยก็ต้องเป็นบุคคลที่มีคุณสมบัติ He has to have studied under a bona fide spiritual teacher himself, and then he can also be a spiritual teacher. พอพอก็คืออันที่เพราะตัวท่านเองเนี่ยก็คือจะต้องเป็นบุคคลที่ได้เรียนรู้ศาสตร์ของพระเวทเนี่ยมาจากพระอาจารย์ของท่านอีกทีนึงท่านถึงจะ But some people study, but then they don't practice. Just like you may go to college and study something at college, but then after you graduate, you may never do that work. แต่ว่าหลังจากที่เราเรียนจบมาเนี่ยเราอาจจะไม่ได้ความรู้นั้นหรือไม่ได้ทํางานตรงกระสายความรู้ที่เราเรียน So the same way the spiritual teacher he studied and he's also applying that knowledge in his life ในลักษณะเดียวกันพระอาจารย์เนี่ยจะเป็นบุคคลที่ศึกษาพระเวทแค่นั้นยังไม่พอท่านจะนําเอาความรู้ที่ท่านศึกษาเนี่ยมาปฏิบัติในชีวิตประจำวันด้วย So he's not materialistic Okay, so these are the two main qualifications of the spiritual teacher. So Prabhupada said, this Krishna consciousness movement is completely authorized from Vedic principles. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, "The actual aim of Vedic research is to find out Krishna." In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, "The actual aim of Vedic research is to find out Krishna." In the Bhagavad, in the Brahma Samhita, it is also stated, "Krishna, Govinda." Has innumerable forms, but they are all one. ในบรมสมิตาได้กล่าวไว้เช่นกันว่า Krishna Govinda มีรูปลักษณ์ที่นับไม่ถ้วนแต่ทั้งหมดเป็นหนึ่งเดียว So Krishna has many forms. He's, it says Ananta Rup. Ananta Rup. Ananta means many, and Rup means form. So Krishna's name is also Ananta Rup. He has many forms. Rup ลักษณ์ของพระชนาเนี่ยเรามีชื่อหนึ่งว่าอนันตรูปนั่นหมายถึงว่าพระองค์เนี่ยทรงมีรูปลักษณ์แบบว่านับไม่ถ้วน But they're all one. Krishna can appear in different forms. He incarnates. He has avatars. He come in the world, just like there's Matsya and Kurma and Varaha and Nishinga. Kurma, Nishinga. So they're they're all Krishna, but he's coming in different forms. So Prabhupada says they are not like our forms, which are fallible. His form is infallible. 
สวาบันจะบอกว่ารูปลักษณ์เหล่านี้เหมือนไม่เหมือนกันกับรูปลักษณ์ของพวกเราที่มีความผิดพลาดรูปลักษณ์เหล่ารูปลักษณ์ของพระองค์ไม่มีความผิดพลาด My form has a beginning, but his form has no beginning. รูปลักษณ์ของเราเนี่ยมีจุดเริ่มต้นแต่รูปลักษณ์ของกษัตริย์นั้นไม่มีจุดเริ่มต้น It is Ananta, and his form, so many multi forms, has no end. เป็นอนันตะแล้วก็รูปลักษณ์ของพระองค์เนี่ยมีมากมายหลากหลายโดยไม่มีที่สิ้นสุด My form is sitting here, and not in my apartment. รูปลักษณ์ของอาตมานั่งอยู่ที่นี่ไม่ได้อยู่ที่บ้าน Just like Prabhupada, is, he's talking to an audience in a big hall. So he's saying to the audience, he said, "I am sitting here. I'm not in my apartment. I'm only. I can only be in one place at a time." And then s a v a n ก็พูดกับผู้ที่มามาฟังหรือผู้ที่มาชมนะบอกว่าตอนนี้เนี่ยอาตมาเนี่ยก็นั่งอยู่ที่นี่อาตมาไม่ได้นั่งอยู่ที่บ้านของอาตมา And Prabhupada then says to the audience. You are sitting there and not in your apartment. But Krishna can be everywhere, all at one time. He can sit down in Goloka Vrindavan, and at the same time. He is everywhere, all pervading. Krishna is s i t t i n g in Goloka Vrindavan, and in the same time, God is sitting everywhere. So, Prabhu, uh, Prabhupada is describing Krishna can sit down in Goloka Vrindavan. Goloka Vrindavan means Krishna's residence in the spiritual world. Krishna is sitting. อยู่ได้ทุกองทุกแห่งแล้วพระองค์เนี่ยก็ทรงอยู่ที่โกโลกาเวนดาวันซึ่งเป็นพระตำหนักทิพย์ของพระองค์ But at the same time Krishna is everywhere in every heart and in every atom และพระองค์เนี่ยก็ทรงแผ่กระจายไปทั่วเพราะว่าพระองค์เนี่ยทรงอยู่ในทุกทุกอะตอมแล้วคงอยู่ในทุกทุกปัจจัย So Krishna is the original and he is the oldest And Krishna is also the one who is the oldest and the oldest. Because before, before Brahma even is born, Krishna existed. So Krishna is older than Brahma, so he is the oldest. Krishna is also the oldest and the oldest, and the oldest is the oldest. But, but but whenever you look at a picture of Krishna, you'll find a young boy, 15 or 20 years old. You'll never find an old man. <laughs> Krishna has such nice black hair. But as we get old, we see our hair go grey and fall out. And we see, we see when we're young, the skin is nice, but as you get old, then the skin all wrinkles. ผิวพันเราก็ดีแต่งตึงแต่หลังหลังจากเราแก่ไปเนี่ยเราก็เริ่มเหี่ยวละ So we we become old and you can tell you're old because the body you can see the age in the body เราเนี่ยแก่เพราะฉะนั้นเราก็จะเห็นความแก่ในร่างกายเราได้ And so Krishna He was just always like, but Krishna, although he was in this world for more than a hundred years, he was still like a young man. 
งมาเกชันเนี่ยจะอยู่ในโลกนี้นะเป็น100ปีก็แล้วแต่แต่พระองค์เนี่ยก็ยังทรงดูเหมือนเด็กอยู่เสมอ mm-hmm. so we see pictures of Krishna as a charioteer driving Arjuna's chariot เราจะเห็นกระชันเนี่ยมาเป็นผู้เป็นผู้ขับราชรถให้กับอัจฉริย This was at the time of Krishna speaking the Bhagavad Gita อันนี้เนี่ยเป็นเวลาที่กระชันเนี่ยทรงตรัสบาคาวัตกิตา So at that time Krishna was at least a hundred years old และในเวลานั้นเนี่ยกระชันเนี่ยอายุประมาณอย่างน้อยเนี่ยหนึ่งร้อยปีละ And he had great grandchildren But still, he looked just like a boy. Because Krishna is God, he, so he never becomes old. Now, if we ask people, do you know what God looks like? They will think, "Oh, he must be an old man." They don't know what God looks like. They know God is the oldest person in the world, so they think, "Well, he must be very old, and he will, you know, face will be wrinkled, and maybe he's all bald and no hair." โอ้เขาน่าจะแก่มากจริงๆนะแล้วก็น่าจะหัวล้วนด้วยน่าจะไม่มีผม But we say no, God is Krishna. He's a young man. He never gets old because his body is not material. His body is spiritual. แล้วเขาจะบอกว่าไม่เราไม่เคยแก่แล้วก็ร่างเป็นร่างทิพย์เป็นร่างอมตะทาวรไม่เคยแก่ So this is the power of Krishna. But if you want to find Krishna, then you may study all the Vedas. But you may never find him by studying the Vedas. แต่ว่าถึงแม้จากการที่เราจะต้องมานั่งศึกษาพระเวททั้งหมดเนี่ยอาจจะไม่เจอพระองค์ก็ได้ You might be lucky but it's very difficult to find Krishna from the Vedas อาจจะโชคดีแต่ก็มันจะเป็นการยากมากที่จะหาคริชนาจากพระเวทได้ But if you want to learn about Krishna you can learn from his devotees แต่ถ้าเกิดเราอยากจะเรียนรู้เกี่ยวกับคริชนาเนี่ยเราสามารถเรียนรู้เกี่ยวกับพระองค์ได้จากเด็กๆที่สาวกของเราเนี่ยใจดีมากแล้วก็มีพระเมตตามากคริชนาสิคริชนาไม่ hide himself from you คริชนาเนี่ยอาจจะแอบแอบกับเราอยู่ but the devotees will say here is Krishna take him here he is you take him แต่ว่าสาวกเนี่ยจะบอกกับคริชนาว่าจะบอกกับสาวว่านี่กฤษณาอยู่นี่นะสาวจะบอกแล้วก็เอาเอากฤษณาไปของกฤษณา So Krishna's devotees are so kind. สาวของกฤษณาเนี่ยใจดีมาก You have to take advantage of the mercy of Krishna's devotees. เราเนี่ยจะต้องรับช่วยโอกาสจากสาวของกฤษณา Okay, so we will stop here tonight. Okay, Are there any questions? So we've been speaking from Prabhupada's lectures. We're hearing how Prabhupada is presenting the knowledge of the Vedas. เราก็ฟังจากอันนี้ก็เป็นคำบรรยายของศิลปะบางนะว่าท่านเนี่ยทรงบรรยายเกี่ยวกับความรู้ทิพย์ไว้ว่ายังไงบ้าง
Prabhupada was in England and he's talking to British people, so they did not know the Vedas. So, so Prabhupada is speaking very basically to make it easy for everyone to understand. Right. We heard there are two processes to get knowledge. One is ascending and the other is descending. So we, we said better to get the knowledge de descending than to go ascending. We should get knowledge descending. We should not try to get knowledge ascending. Okay. And then we said there are three sources of getting knowledge. You could use the senses directly to understand things. The other process is you could use your mind to try to understand everything. But the best way to get knowledge is to hear Shabda Prama, to hear from the Vedas. Because we are not perfect, we have four defects. We make mistakes. Sometimes we cheat. We are subject to illusion. And we have imperfect senses. So these are the four defects. Okay, so we will ask Shaya what is her question tonight? Okay. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, Dhanavapranam, please accept my humble obeisances according to Sila Prabhupada. Um, Ham Dham Ho Mira Ha Adana, Makiti Fangwa Sangka Shraya Naha, Kien Wai Nai Scripture Hong Hawa, Mankawa Ho Yong Hai, Hana Lai Pen Pen Bukhalika Pap Sung Sut Heng Pajao. Tinya, Tikai Langta Tikai Kui Kap, Kundin up to Hindu in Yaha, Kukau Madisha. Her question is, Guru Maharaj, when you explain about Sankharacharya that he uh, he accepts that Narayan is superior than all the demigods, and he, he is the supreme, like that. Where she have a conversation with uh, a Mayavadi kind of people, and they what they think is all the demigods are equal, even, and they consider Narayan as a demigod as well. And they say, all are equal. So how can, how can she explain to them? Yes, well, she has to know more about uh, the different qualities which are there between the demigods and the Supreme Lord Narayan. There, there's a book called The Nectar of Devotion. 
มีหนังสือเล่มหนึ่งที่ชื่อว่านับทิพย์แห่งการอุทิศตนเสียสละ So Ram Lakshman Prabhu only translated the first part of that book. หนังสือเล่มนี้เนี่ยว่าเออรัมชมบูเนี่ยแปลมาแล้วแต่ว่าแปลแค่ในส่วนแรกของหนังสือนั้น But there's another part of the book which goes on to describe qualities of Krishna. แต่มันมีในเนื้อหาส่วนหลังของหนังสือเล่มนั้นที่จะอธิบายเพิ่มเติมเกี่ยวกับคุณสมบัติของคริสนา So he describes how there are. The, the author he describes it, he selected. He said actually Krishna has unlimited qualities, but he picked out 64 of Krishna's qualities. ตรงนั้นเนี่ยจะมีการบรรยายเกี่ยวกับคุณสมบัติของคริสนาคำนี้คริสนาเนี่ยทรงมีคุณสมบัติแบบเยอะแยะมากมายแต่ว่าผู้เขียนนั้นได้เลือกมา64คุณสมบัติของคริสนา Uh, he explained that the demigods, in their perfect condition, even Brahma, who is the head of the demigods, at the best condition, he can have 50 out of the 64 qualities. And Lord Shiva, he has 55 out of the 64. And Lord, Lord Vishnu, he has 60 out of 64. But Krishna is the most complete, most perfect. He has 64 quality in full. แต่ว่าคริสนาเนี่ยเป็นบุคคลที่สมบูรณ์มากที่สุดเพราะว่าพระองค์เนี่ยทรงมีทั้งหมด64คุณสมบัติเต็ม So we see Lord Brahma he's you know he's the demi he's a demigod but he offers prayers to Krishna เราสามารถเห็นได้พระพรหมเนี่ยเป็นเหล่าเทวดาแต่ท่านเนี่ยก็แสดงถวายบทมนต์ต่อคริสนา He prays Ishvara Parama Krishna, the Krishna is the supreme controller. Thana Bhagwan Ishvara Parama Krishna, the Bhagwan Krishna is the supreme controller. And then he describes about each of different demigods, what they do, and how they are also under the control of Krishna, Govinda. And then he describes the Lord Thevada Pantam, and he says. อ่าแล้วแต่ละท่านเนี่ยอยู่ภายใต้แต่ละคนเนี่ยอยู่ภายใต้การควบคุมของกฤษณะอย่างไรบ้างแต่ละองค์ Shankaracharya yeah. said Narayana Parovyakta Lord Narayan is above the material manifestation He didn't say Ganesh Parovyakta He didn't say Durga Parovyakta He didn't say any demigod is above the material He said Narayan is above the material nature. Sankaracharya, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, Pranarayan is a beautiful person who is in the world of the world of the world. So, he said, 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 And then when Shankaracharya, before he left the world, he said to all of his followers, he told them, Bhaji Govinda, Bhaji Govinda, Bhaji Govinda Mudhamate. He said, worship Govinda, you fools, you rascals. <laughs> เมื่อกี้นี้นะคะซึ่งในสโลนั้นแปลว่าให้สวดให้สวดชื่อของโกวินเดาให้สวดมนต์หาโกวินเดาพวกคนโง่เขาทั้งหลาย said all of your word jugglery and mental speculation will do you no good at the time of death 
เพราะว่าการคาดคะเนการคิดไปเองหรือว่าการคิดแบบแยกออกมาของพวกเธอเนี่ยมันเป็นความคิดแบบโง่เขลาซึ่งมันจะไม่มีมันจะไม่ช่วยอะไรเธอในตอนในบ้านปลายชีวิตของเธอ So b a j i g o v i n d a b a j i g o v i n d a b a j i g o v i n d a m u d a m a t e s a m p r a p t i s a m i h i t e k a l e n a h i n a h i r a k s h a t i d u k r i m k a r i n e i s very famous. Shankaracharya spoke like this just before he left the world. This is a word of Shankaracharya before he left the world. This is a word of Shankaracharya before he left the world. Why did he say Baji Govinda? Why didn't he say Baji p i k a n e t Why didn't he say Baji Shiva, Baji Uma? No, he just said Baji Govinda, and he said it three times to emphasize. เราทำไมท่านถึงไม่บอกว่าท่านอยากพูดว่า Baji Govinda เนี่ยสามรอบทำไมท่านไม่บอกว่า Baji p a p i k a n e t หรือว่า Baji p a m e t Uma อย่างนี้แต่ทำไมท่านถึงบอกให้บอกว่ากล่าวชื่อของ Govinda เนี่ย So like this, you explain to your friends why Krishna, Vishnu is supreme. It's very. You show them the Krishna book. Brahma is worshiping Krishna. Brahma is offering prayers and bowing to Krishna, and Indra is also. <coughs> หรือว่าเราสามารถให้เขาดูหนังสือพระกิสนาได้ในนั้นเนี่ยจะมีบทมนต์ที่พระพรหมเนี่ยกล่าวสงเสริญกิชนะทําไมพวกเราเทวดาเหล่านี้เนี่ยถึงกล่าวบทมนต์ถวายกิชนะแบบนี้ You take your Krishna book with you and show them the pictures, show them and read the stories how how Indra and and Brahma and Shiva how they are all worshiping Krishna. เราก็เอาหนังสือพระชนะเนี่ยไปให้พวกเขาดูแล้วก็ดูว่าให้เขาดูเลยว่าดูซิว่าพระพรหมพระศิวะอันเนี้ยบูชากิชนะกันอย่างไรบ้าง So the demigods are different from Krishna. The demigods take birth and they die. Krishna doesn't take birth and die. We just told you we were reading. Krishna doesn't grow old. He doesn't die. But the demigods, they do. They, they take their. They have a. They take a position, and then they have to give up that position. We can also become demigods. Maybe in the past, maybe you were a demigod, but you're not a demigod now. Ah, we are going to listen to Krishna. That Brahma is a demigod. Brahma is not dead. He is still alive. Brahma is still a child. 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 Brahma ตำแหน่งที่มีอายุขัย So Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, if your friends accept the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, from the planet of Brahma, the highest planet in the material world, down to the lowest, all are places of birth and death. เรามีคำกล่าวเนี่ยถ้าเกิดว่าเพื่อนถ้าเกิดว่าคนที่เราคุยด้วยในยอมรับพระพุทธิตาเนี่ยเราก็สามารถบอกเขาได้ว่าเขาในพระพุทธเจ้าได้กล่าวไว้ว่าแต่ตั้งแต่โลกสูงสุดก็คือโลกพระพรหมเนี่ยจนโลกที่ต่ําสุดทั้งในจักรวาลวัตถุนี้ทั้งหมดทุกสิ่งมีชีวิตเนี่ยอยู่ภายใต้วัฏจักรแห่งการเวียนว่ายตายเกิด But beyond this material world there's a spiritual world And in the spiritual world, there's no birth and death. แล้วก็สูงไปกว่าโลกทิพโลกวัตถุนี้เนี่ยมีโลกทิพแต่ที่โลกทิพเนี้ยเป็นสิ่งที่อยู่เหนือการเวียนว่ายตายกู So the demigods they're in the material world. They're not in the spiritual world. อาจารย์เล่าเทวดาเนี่ยพวกท่านอยู่ในโลกวัตถุไม่ได้อยู่ในโลกทิพ
the not pure devotees. They have some material desires. But they're devotees. But not pure devotees. There's many demigods. Thirty three hundred and thirty million demigods. Some buy some sip land. Huh? Yes, you are. Some sip sam. What do you say? Some sip sam land om. Some sip sam. Yes. No. More than some sip sam land. Not some sip sam land. Three hundred and thirty million. Three hundred sun by Sam Sip Lan. Oh, Sam Roy Sam Sip Lan. Sam Roy Sam Sip Lan. I don't have speaking Chinese. Oh, I got my Chinese mixed up. Yeah, Sam Roy Sam Sip Lan. Yes, right. <laughs> okay. That's how many demigods there are. Of course, some are more important than others. So our books are authorized. They're the evidence. You use that to present to them. Tell them, read our Krishna book. When, when Krishna was in the womb of Devaki, Devaki was in the prison house of Kamsa, all the demigods were coming to the jail and they were offering prayers to Krishna because they knew Krishna was in Devaki's womb. You understand, Shaya? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, it's very clearly for your answer. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. No other questions tonight? No, Gurudev. Okay. So we'll finish here. Okay. Thank you very much, Archana, for your question, for your translation. And sh thanks, Shaya, for her question. And thank all the devotees for listening. And we hope you have a very good night and we'll see you on Friday. I'll see you on Wednesday for Krishna book. Okay? And we'll continue in Shopanishad on Friday. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much to you also. Srila Prabhupada ki. Yeah. Gorbaki yeah. Brinda ki. Yeah. Yeah.